Let's compute the indefinite integral, x squared over 4x squared minus 36, quantity squared, with respect to x. Now, first thing I want to do, I want to pull the numbers out. So I can factor a 4 out of 4x squared minus 36. Since we're squaring, we're going to pull out a 16. And then I'm going to take the 9 and replace it with an r squared. So r will be equal to 3. That means I'm now looking at the indefinite integral x squared over x squared minus r squared, quantity squared, with respect to x. Now, you'll note x squared minus r squared is a difference of two squares, so it's x plus r times x minus r. So we're really looking at x squared over x plus r squared, x minus r squared. We're in the case of a partial fractions integral where we have repeated linear factors. Now, the partial fractions recipe in this case, I'm going to take one of our factors in the denominator. We contribute a term for its highest power, and then we also put in terms for the lower powers. So we have a 2, I'll put in a 1, and then I stop. We have a factor for x plus r squared, put in all lower powers. So we have a 2, I put in a 1, and I stop. So this is what our general term is going to look like. Now, we we'll clear the denominators. We get this equation here. If I'm looking for easy points to evaluate to get formulas for a, b, c, and d, if I let x be equal to r, okay, well, we'll get a term here, but then all the others are going to vanish. So we just have r squared equals 4r squared, or a is equal to 1 fourth. Likewise, I'll let x be equal to minus r. So we're going to lose all terms but the one with the c. And that gives us, okay, same general equation, c equal to 1 fourth. Here's the important part. Instead of trying to find another two points to evaluate to get b and d, I want to differentiate our equation and then try r and minus r again. So since these two expressions are equal, if we take the derivative, they stay equal. So I'll let you work this out. And just note here with the x squared minus r squared, Okay, that's x plus r times x minus r. I've collapsed it to save space. Now, if I try x equals r in this equation, we get 2r equals 4ar plus 4br squared. So we're going to lose this term, this term, this term, and this term, giving us b equal to 1 over 4r. If we use x equal to minus r, same idea. We get d equal to minus 1 over 4r. So I have a, b, c, and d, and now we can integrate. Now, we're going to integrate term by term. I'm going to save the 1 fourth till the end. So here I have x minus r to the minus 2. If we let u be equal to x minus r, we can work that out, and I get minus x minus r to the minus 1 power using a u substitution. For 1 over r, x minus r, just remember r is a number. So I have 1 over x minus r. If I let u be equal to x minus r, we're looking at any derivative of 1 over u, which is going to give me natural log of x minus r. Same idea for our last two terms. So we get this expression, and now I want to combine things. So here I have minus 1 over x minus r. Here we have minus 1 over x plus r. When I combine them, we get minus 2x over x squared minus r squared. For the logarithms, okay, we're going to have a difference of logarithms. So the rule for difference of logarithms, if I have log a minus log b, that's equal to log of a over b. So we can rewrite this as, okay, we'll have the 1 over r in front, natural log of x minus r over x plus r. We multiply by our 1 fourth, put in our constant of integration. So that's going to be our answer for the general formula. Now, of course, we check our work. So what we'll do is we're going to take the derivative of our antiderivative, and we better get what was in the integrand originally, x squared over x squared minus r squared, quantity squared. Now, for the first part, this is just going to be quotient rule. So you can work that out. So remember your mnemonic low d high less high d low over low squared. 
For this part, we're going to use chain rule with a logarithm. So remember, chain rule. We're going to take derivative of the outside, evaluate at the inside, and then take the derivative of the inside. Now, the derivative of natural log says, okay, if I put a box here, derivative of natural log of box is 1 over box. So we're just going to flip this over. Then, for the derivative of the inside, again, we're going to use the quotient rule. So we get this expression here. Now, when we start collapsing things, okay, you can just work that out. And you see that we get 4x squared over x squared minus r squared quantity squared. We put back in our 1 fourth. So our antiderivative here checks out. Back to the original problem. So the indefinite integral of x squared over 4x squared minus 36 quantity squared with respect to x. We factor 4 out of the denominator twice to get a 1 16th. Then, with what's left over, we're going to set r equal to 3. Now, we can go to the equation from the previous board. We're going to replace r with 3. So we get this expression here. When I simplify things, we get to our final answer.